it's, I just want to encourage people to not only diversify, you know, across uh, like buckets, but within the content that you're doing, because that is how you're going to really generate income. Welcome back to the Cypress Room, where we dive deep on influencing with integrity. I'm Maggie Honeycutt. And I'm Christina Muscari. And today we have another interview for you. We're so excited today to welcome Erin Marshall from Live Pretty on a Penny. Hey guys, I'm so excited to be here in the Cypress Room. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to share like all my little nuggets and gems and all that stuff that goes into influencing and that's helped me with my career. So I'm ready to get started. We are excited. You were a person who was on our list. We made the list of these are the people yes. we want to interview. You were on both of our lists. I was like, yeah. I'm reaching out to her first. <laughs> Good. And the reason we wanted to have Erin on here, I'm going to read a little bit of her bio. She has been in this game of content creation since 2012, y'all. So anybody who has been around that long since before the pandemic is a real one. So we're going to hear about longevity in her business and how she runs it. And when she launched Live Pretty on a Penny in 2012, her initial topics included her personal experiences and DIY adventures. She then set a lofty goal for herself to move others to get to work on their own DIY projects. Throughout her blogging career, she has developed Live Pretty on a Penny into a go-to home and lifestyle resource for her large and growing audience. Her current content includes room makeovers and reveals, home decor tips and trips, family travel tips, which I've seen her Disney cruise and her mom is like the cutest and travels with them a lot. I love her and her general life advice and hacks. So Erin, we're so excited to have you here. Yes. We have a blogger. You're our first like OG blogger. OG, so I feel yeah. very excited that you're going to give us all your information and how long you've been doing this for. Yes. Thank you so much. I've been around a long time. I can't believe it's been since 2012. It, it, it feels that long, but then it still doesn't feel that long. So what made you, and I just learned this in our pre-interview that you still have a full-time job and you just create content on the side as a side hustle. So talk to me about when you first started your blog in 2012, why, what inspired you to do that? So pretty much in 2012, yes, I, and I, yes, I do still work. It's possible to maintain both. I definitely do it by choice. You're my um, hero. Yes, <laughs> I do it by choice. And it gives me, you know, at first of all, it gives me a nice little change. So I'm not, I don't get so caught up in just because it's, I mean, it can, you can get really distracted just being at home and doing things all the time. Like you can never, I, I feel like with me having a job, I get to get a little bit of the outside world, but then, you know, when it's time to turn the outside world off, I can come back and get into a whole other thing. So it still kind of feels like a hobby in a sense, even though it's a monetized hobby, but because I still work, it doesn't feel like so much pressure for me. Um, so pretty much when I started in 2012, it was just me starting just to kind of like chronicle my DIY journey. We had just bought our house. It was a foreclosure. It was like, that was like when the market, you guys remember when the housing market had like plummeted and, um, yeah. yes. so we were like, we were newlyweds and we were like, you know, we had, and we mainly were getting a house cause we were, me and my husband were both living in apartments at the time. And we mainly got a house cause we had a, a pit bull. Um, dog and you know a lot of apartment complexes don't want pit bulls you know as pets in the complex so we were like okay we he, he, my husband was able to slide by with them for a long time and then you, we just knew like okay it's gonna at some point that's gonna change and they're either gonna kick you out <laughs> anyway so we need to start looking so when we got engaged we started looking and um a week before our our wedding we actually closed and moved in to this house which was a foreclosure and um I knew nothing about home stuff I mean my mom always had like a lot of art and stuff but she wasn't like a DIYer like my dad wasn't a DIYer these were just like um skills I picked up out of necessity because when we moved in the house was it's a 1996 house so in the 90s there was nothing special about a house there, it was just cookie cutter, very basic. Um, and um, we just kind of like, I remember the time I decided to get started, I was looking at um, HGTV back at, back at the time when I looked at HGTV all the time. And 
they were they were yeah. T- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were tiling over a fireplace and I remember look at, at that time when they were tiling over the fireplace I like looked because our TV's over our fireplace I like looked down at our fireplace like hmm I probably could do this so I went to Home Depot with a charge card bought a wet saw bought way too expensive tile when I look back on it it was way too expensive <laughs> um and I bought um you know the mortar and all that stuff and I went to YouTube and I, I brought all that home I mean the wet saw is kind of a crazy first tool anyway you know that's not like the tool that everyone goes to as the first you went tool. I mean you went you went all in I, know, yeah, I still have aggressive. never used a wet saw yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went all I went all in. I was like dedicated and I brought it home. My husband came home and he's like, I'm like, we're getting ready to tile over this fireplace. And he's like, What? He's like, All right, whatever. And then we like looked on YouTube and and um he was the first one to actually use the wet saw. Then I started using it. But um that was our first our that was our first project tiling over our brick uh fireplace. And from there it was just like that was that was like the journey. I just kept documenting everything. So did you document from the very beginning, like had a camera out and this is yeah. like, I mean, 2012 is right when the iPhone started really taking yeah. over the market. Did you have an iPhone back then? I don't even remember if I had an iPhone. I might have, but I just honestly don't even remember if I, I don't remember having an iPhone in the, in the early okay. stages. So I'm trying to figure out how did I document? I don't even think I used, a, I really don't even know how I documented things. But I would have had to, I don't know. I couldn't tell you how I documented You had to it. take pictures, right? Yeah, it's so hard say, to remember. Yeah, it's, but I just can't remember if I took them on a camera and then uploaded it to my computer mm-hmm. and then put them on my blog. I feel like I did it that way. And You um, probably did. Yeah, and then so I just, you know, I, I really enjoyed the blogging process because it allowed me to really talk through my process. Like it really allowed me to hone in on every step. And I was so intentional about making sure I knew every step and documented every step so that I could share with people how I did it, you know? So, um, you know, I kind of missed that because now I feel like I just rushed through blog posts and I want to get better, you know, at that, you know, go back to how I started, you know? Um, and so then from there, it was like painting our kitchen cabinets. It was like, um, staying in an oak table that we had used in our dining room. It was like for the, for the longest time, that stain in an oak table was the number one search post on Google for oak tables. Like it was, wow. It was That's amazing. Yeah. And, but I was really thorough in how I documented my processes. So yeah. So that's, that was my start. So in the beginning with blogging, were you doing documenting these projects with the intention of, man, maybe I could monetize this or did you truly just, document what you were doing for maybe friends and family like did you know in that beginning stages that this is something that you could potentially earn an income from like how did that process work did you know about seo and search rankings or no i didn't know about any of that i just knew i didn't even think about monetizing i don't even like monetization wasn't a huge thing back then i mean people i guess had um they used to monetize on their blogs with ads and stuff but when I started out I didn't I was on Blogspot I didn't know anything about monetization I literally was doing it as a hobby like it was like truly a passion like I loved going to thrift stores and refinishing things and stuff like that so when I when I started I had no idea about SEO um monetization um it was like literally once I found out that you could get stuff, then I was like, oh, I'll just get free stuff. I'll get free paint. I'll yeah, get yeah. free. And that was how it was. Like I, like when Home Depot yeah. was sponsoring people, I was like, you know, okay, you work for Home Depot. You, I mean, I remember several projects where it was just literally free product. And I was happy with that, you know, until you start getting those tax bills in the mail for those, for those free products. But, you know, <laughs> it was like, I was just excited for the opportunity, you know, because I was going to do it anyway. So I just felt like, okay, I'll do, I'm going to do it anyway. So I may as well get the free paint or get the free gift card and go buy everything, you know, from these different, uh, 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 brands. So it just, it just, it, it didn't matter to me. I, I really enjoyed it that much where it really didn't matter to me. So when did it change and transition into, and of course you're, you're, you're making a full-time living. So you still have a lot of focus 
over there and you're not worried about like, how am I going to pay my bills? I'm working. That's how I'm going to pay my bills. So when did you figure out, oh, I can, you know, on top of this product, I can ask for money because I'm giving exposure to Home Depot or this flooring company or whoever. Was there a relationship you had or did you go to a conference or did you just figure it out? No. So I did go to a conference. I went to Haven conference that, and I went to Haven. I went to Haven's second year conference. I think they're in like year 10 or 11 now, I think, but oh, wow. I went okay. to, to sec to the second Haven conference. And that's when I learned about more monetization efforts. Like, Oh, okay. People are making money, but I still didn't know how they were making the money. Like I still, because even then when Haven started, everybody was still pushing blogging as the way to make your money. So Instagram right. wasn't around at the time. So, I mean, mm -hmm. really, it was just about monetization through your blog. And that's when I started learning about SEO and how you need to rank and all this stuff. But even then, it still didn't 100% click with me about making money. It, that wasn't until I think Instagram came around where I was just like, oh, okay. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it was a little bit. Instagram was just easier to understand yeah. because it's like, I post a picture, right. I write a caption, right. I want to get people to come to the blog. But again, affiliate marketing wasn't even super huge as it is now. Like everybody wasn't necessarily shopping on their phone. People were still shopping a lot in right. stores. Right. So when did you start? Um, and of course, when Instagram came around, I'm sure you had already crafted. Here's how I take these beautiful pictures. Here's how I capture my projects. So was that a natural transition to start posting on Instagram more when that started surfacing up as a way to like get your stuff out to more people? It it was, but still it wasn't because I, the type of person I am, I I don't like to do a lot of research. Like I like for things to just kind of be in my face. How I, how do I do it? Like if I have to do a lot of digging, I'm kind of like I'll come back to it. And so Instagram, like you said, it was a little bit easier to translate. Okay, you post. But even then, my pictures weren't great because that's not what Instagram was about. It wasn't like, oh, I have to post these great pictures. Again, Instagram became another way for me to just uh, document my DIY okay. journey. So it was um, it was like uh, just 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 and that was before store. store I think that was before stories, right? Because I think Stories. I don't know. We have been doing this for a long. I know. Does that make you feel old? Yeah, because I'm trying to figure out how did I even document it. Like I don't. I couldn't tell you. I just remember when stories came around, it made it easier to document it in the app along the way. And then, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and I kind of hated stories. Like I just felt they were, of course, they were awkward. You know, things like that because it was new to me, and I'm not a huge person that likes a lot of change. So I was just like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about this. But when I started to realize that it gave me another way to, to show the background, you know, like the, the behind mm -hmm. the scenes, then I more started embracing it more. But yeah, I just, I, I can't, I, I, I really can't tell you. And because when Instagram came around, I had, I kind of, I think Instagram came around around 2013 or something like that 20, 2013 2014 is like when it got really mm -hmm. popular yeah. and I had just had my son so a lot of things were like a blur you know what I'm saying in between that so I don't <laughs> even really remember like how but I remember like my turning point of when I really did start to monetize on Instagram and that was like around 2018 ish is when it really, and that's why I tell people it takes time. Like this newfound success that a lot, yeah. of, like that a lot of people are experiencing, that's new. That's kind of unheard of. You don't just, <laughs> yeah. We, we we weren't experiencing that. It was like if you think about, it, if I was doing this since 2012 and I didn't really start making money until 2018, 2019. You know, it was, and that wasn't even a lot of money. I wasn't making a lot of money then. It was just where I really saw brands being willing to pay, you know, for that. But I didn't. It wasn't like I was making a ton of money. So this newfound thing where people are just like getting viral and then making all this money, I that's that's new to me. Or expecting to make all this money. Yeah. That's really new to me. 
Yeah, my story parallels yours like mm -hmm. so much. And I didn't have a full time job, but I was a stay at home mom. So I was raising kids and having kids during that whole time. I started with a blog because that's what everybody was doing. Mm -hmm. And again, it was just I started flipping furniture because I had no money to finish furnish my house. So I would buy I saw flea market flip on HGTV. Oh, yeah. I was like, I can make over furniture. So I started just making over furniture in my house. And then I love to document the process because why am I going to do this if no one's ever going to see it? Like, yeah, <laughs> I, wanted to, I, I just wanted to show my hobby. Right. And I had a background in corporate communication. So that's probably why I started doing it because I was used to just, hey, you market what you're doing. This right. is what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't go into it being like, I'm going to make millions of dollars because nobody was really doing that back mm -hmm. then. There were no. like, really successful bloggers, but you didn't really know what they were making. Or, right. Or, you exactly. know, you didn't yep. know. Yep. And it was everything back then was HGTV and everybody watching HGTV for the trends and the paint colors and all the things. And so I just, you're just taking me back, like hearing your journey. And I think the reason that you're probably still around today through all these changes is because your brand started from such an authentic place. Right. It didn't start from, oh, I want to make all this money. I can make all this money as a creator and be a boss babe. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly. like, I just, I have this passion and we got to do things on a budget because I think most people in America have to do things mm -hmm. on a budget mm -hmm. and let's show people the process. And I, I just love that. And I think that really shines through in you because mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but the first time I met you was at Haven. I think it was 20, it was probably, maybe it was 2021. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it was after the pandemic. I can't remember, but I saw you speak and you were on a panel and you were talking about different streams of income and you had created these really cute oh, DIY yeah, yeah, shirts. Yeah, 21. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you were telling people you were on a panel of like different things you can do besides just creating content. And so mm -hmm. you're talking about these shirts you created and how you did it and where you sold them and everything. And I just remember this girl raising her hand and being like, I redid my floors and it went viral and it took off and it's amazing. But like, what do I do? Should I re make over my floors again? And you were just like, no, <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to be like what performed really well. And let me just do it over and over again. I'm just doing what I enjoy, what brings me joy. And I'm sharing it with other people. You were just like, I don't have time for that. And I was just like, okay, I need to meet her. <laughs> I need to glean from her because, and I'm sure that person that asked that question maybe never came back to Haven and maybe fizzled out because her focus was just on the wrong mm -hmm. spot. And I think that your, your longevity in this industry and how you're, you still, you don't shy away from like all the changes, mm -hmm. but you're like, I don't have to do all these things Yeah, yeah to be I, fulfilled right, and, and to be successful. Exactly. And I think it, you know, a lot of it has to do with age too. Like I just can't, like I, I physically can't, just stay on top of every single trend. And there are people that are older than me. Like I'm 40. Oh, I'll be 41 in April. So there are people that 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 are able to 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 you know tear down whole rooms and do all this stuff. I just know me and my current limitations in life that I'm just not gonna be doing that anymore. Like I still do it, but I do it at a pace that doesn't exhaust me or burn me out. And that's been like my, my main focus. Like when I'm doing things, it's like, okay, why am I doing it? Am I just doing it for content or will this really impact my family's life in some way? Could it potentially bring me money? I do, you know, monetization still is at my forefront. Like I won't say, I won't lie yeah. and say that that's not, but there are a couple of things that come before that, you know, it's not just like, let me do this so I can get money from it because the projects and DIY is still rooted in as in my passion. Like I still truly honestly enjoy seeing the transformations of spaces. And I just like, the, I just love before and afters anyway. So, um, so I do think that that's one of the reasons that I've been able to stay around for so long. And I think that I'm kind of like one of those people where people may not know that, you know, and it's, and, and it may be, and, and I don't even like to come across as braggy, but people may not even know that I'm as successful as, as, maybe some of their bigger people that they really look up to are people that have a million followers and all this stuff. And it's like, no, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I think that yeah. that allows me to kind of stay in the background too, because it's not like people kind of know, like, I don't talk about, Oh, I make this amount of money. You know, I just kind of stay in the background, just deliver the results and, you know, and move on with my day, you know?
Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting. You said a few minutes ago that you don't like change, but your longevity shows me that you've been able to adapt to really big changes very well. I mean, looking from the outside. So tell us about when it made the transition from those still pictures to video content being kind of king. How was that for you? And was it a slow process? Do you now enjoy video? Are you still blogging and doing static pictures? Kind of walk us through that. Cause I think that was kind of this really pivotal change for that. A lot of bloggers never made the transition mm -hmm. and here you are. So I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. So I did, I was forced to, I was forced to make the transition. <laughs> I did not want to, because first of all, I just felt like it was so, so complicated, but I took, mm -hmm. I took, I took myself out of it and said, okay, because I can be stubborn in that sense where I just don't want to change. Why do we have to change? But it was like, okay, then if you don't want to do it, then you can fizzle out and not do it. Like that's really your choice, either do it or don't do it, you know? And that's kind of the decisions we have to have in life anyway. So um, I just kind of just learned what worked for me within like the video space. And as long as I feel like for me, it works as long as I have somebody else doing it for me. So I have a photographer, videographer that I work with to create, to create the videos. And we work really well together because I can come up with a vision. It's just sometimes hard for me to pull out my camera, do it, get the different angles and all that stuff. So I made that investment in myself where I work with a photographer and videographer um, to do that. And I have seen the return on that kind of quality. So that's because that, so now it's become a no-brainer and so now I will say I love photos but video is right up there with photos you know because I think video can tell a, a better story and photos are fine for blogs like I that's that's totally fine like I'll never have a blog where I just link uh videos to it it'll just be it'll still be writing and stuff like that because I think that as long as you can tell the story within the blog post, then that works well for blogging. But for Instagram, I know we like to see, and I think photos work in certain types of posts, but for me, I enjoy creating, creating videos. So once I finally adapted to the change, I was like, oh, it's not so bad, you know? And that's usually how life is anyway. <laughs> once you really just like, you know, say, okay, I could do, let me do this now. Let me just do it. And you're like, oh, okay, that wasn't so bad. So that's how I, that's how it feels. I love your perspective too, because the, I, another reason that you are successful as a content creator is because you're just a really amazing designer. Um, and not everybody who's out here making a living doing this is an amazing designer. Um, I like am the exact opposite of you. I think I have average talent but I was just willing to to do those video skills. And I think that's why I was just positioned in a place that I was doing video before video took off on these short forms. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I've been successful. But I love that like you are an amazing designer and visionary and you were like, I don't want to do this video stuff, but I know I need to and I don't like it. So I'm going to hire it out. I think that's because I think a lot of people would just be like, well, I just give up because I just only like stills and I don't want to do video and I just love that you just took, you're like, okay, I can't just bury my head in the sand, but I also don't enjoy this. So let me take the part that I don't enjoy and hire it out. And now more people can experience your content because of the way the world works right now. So I think exactly. that's really cool. I love that you shared that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah it's, I like that you know, too. it's, it's definitely, um, I've learned as I, as I, as I continue to get older, I am not ashamed of the things that I just don't want to do. And I won't. I don't compromise that for anyone. Like anybody that knows me, I don't like to clean. So I just hired that out. And, and I was doing that before <laughs> I made a dime and live pretty on a penny. That was just something that I was willing to place another sacrifice somewhere else to have somebody do that. I'm never going to clean on top of my refrigerator. I'm never going to clean a shower the way <laughs> my cleaning lady does or clean my floors or I'm, I'm never so gonna relating to you. Yeah. Right now. I'm, I'm so relating to you. That. Yeah. I'm never going to do it. And, and once I come, because it just got to the point where I felt like, okay, I would say, Oh, I'm going to say, so I'm not going to save money. So I'm not going to hire anybody. So I'm going to clean upstairs on, let's just say Friday. And then Saturday I'll clean downstairs, but it didn't just felt like I was always chasing 
the, the upstairs and the downstairs because if the upstairs was clean, then the downstairs wasn't clean when the downstairs was clean. So it was just like, I'm like, okay, this is just one part of my life. If I could outsource it, I'm like, what am I doing? And so, and then it became like, okay, this is not as expensive as you would think it is. My house is not some huge mansion. So it's not like, you know, I'm paying all these hundreds of thousands of dollars to have it clean. So, I, you know, I found a local company, they come every two weeks, they clean it up. And then, you know, then I thought, start thinking about other things that I don't like to do. And I'm like, okay, what is it about content creation you don't like? You don't like linking. So I have a friend who manages my, um, my LTK because we're trying to pick that strategy up. Um, you don't like, mm -hmm. um, you want to do a newsletter, but you're not going to do it if you have to do it. Okay, so same friend is managing that. Um, you know, just finding, and, and it's just like, these are, con these are people that are contractors. So you're paying hourly rates to these people, not tons of money, but they're doing the work that you literally don't want to do. And I'm just not going to do anything that I don't want to do at this point. So. so I love that. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that too. <laughs> I want to go back to your talk at Haven on income streams and tell our audience a little bit more about how you diversify your income streams, um, kind of your silos of where your income comes from. You said you're adding LTK in. Um, so we'd love to hear about just all the different ways that you have monetized your business. So um, currently my business is monetized through brands as my number one stream, which I'm like trying to flip, like it's like, it's been lucrative, but that's a huge commitment. And I mean, the way mm -hmm, influencer mm -hmm. marketing changes that could be here today, gone tomorrow. And I think a lot of people build their business mm -hmm. off of that. Whereas I'm thankful I have been able to build my business off of that, but it's like, okay, mm -mm, gotta be, gotta be a little bit smarter than mm -hmm. that, you know? Um, and so, but that is my primary stream right now. And then um, I did used to have the t-shirt line, but the thing about apparel is that apparel needs to be, if you're going to do apparel, it needs to be your primary focus. And for me, mm -hmm. I could not put enough focus into that to make it lucrative. Like it did okay. And it was a stream, but I'm not just going to spread myself thin for something that just does okay. And it's a stream, you know, like I just wanted, if mm -hmm. it's going to be a stream for me, it needs to be a stream where that I can see the benefits, you know, outweighing the work that I'm have that I have to do. So, um, I did close my t-shirt shop like the year last year. I think it was last year. I closed my t-shirt shop and I thought I was going to be sad, but I wasn't sad. Like I got rid of that stuff so fast, like here, take it. You know, I gave, you know, press to my friend, all this stuff, like here, take it. So, um, but, and that was a weight off my shoulders, you know, I had been holding on to it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that used to be one, but that's not one anymore. Um, and then other streams, I have ad, ad revenue on my blog, on my blog, and then LT, then affiliate linking. So those are the current three. And then I always say, because I work full time, that's another stream for me, you know? So yeah. mm -hmm. it's a good yes. stream. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that just trying to keep everything diversified is definitely the key, definitely the key at not putting all my money or my, um, my plans for my business in one bucket. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. And being able to let go of something in season, like I think exactly. there are seasons for things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I'm transitioning out of it. I had a season of where my content was making me money on YouTube. Then I really focused on brand partnerships and that was kind of my main income. And now I feel like it's flipping again to be like, you're just going to have to invest in your channel again without and figure this out because that's the thing that I can control and I exactly. can't control the brand partnerships. You but right. when the brand partnerships are coming in and they are good and it is good money and you want to do that work and you want to work with that brand, that's what you need to do. But you can't rely on those because budgets change um, products change, staff changes on those. And so you can't rely on that as a steady income. So it is just constantly changing, figuring out where to put money. And you're talking about affiliate sales and I have been focusing on that. And then I got, you know, an email a month ago that Amazon was cutting my commissions and there's nothing I can do about that. We don't, um, so yeah. you have to just be, yeah, you, you're at the mercy of other people when you're creating content. So there does have to be something that you're rooted in besides how much money I'm bringing in or 
you will fail because if that's what your worth is attached to when you lose those brand deals or when your money's down or when your affiliate commissions get cut, it's like, if your identity is attached to that, then it's like, exactly. Yeah. And and I wanted to bring up another yeah. point. I was, I was screaming this at Haven all 2022, just telling DIYers, like you have to open up how you make money with brands. Meaning um, one of the best decisions I ever made was stop. I'm not competing with people for paint sponsorships. Like if a paint sponsorship, comes, mm-hmm. that's great, but I only need to paint certain spaces once or twice like I don't need a new paint sponsorship every year because what am I going to paint so you know I I started just researching and just paying attention to how lifestyle people made money those were the girls that were making 500,000 a million dollars a year so I'm like okay so what is lifestyle it's literally about your life right like how you live and I was just I remember hollering this to DIYers in 2022 just like hey Mm-hmm. What are the soaps that you're using? What are the glass? What's the glassware that you're using? What is the 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 plant food? What are, what are the just everything you can think of that that encompasses your life? What are the things that fit? Like me, I use Duraflame logs since we've had our house, right? And yeah, you know, so it's like one of those things, and it's like okay, that's a part of my lifestyle. Now, a DIYer mm-hmm. may not normally think about a Duraflame. They're looking at paint. They're looking at tools. They're looking at this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. y'all can have all that. The lifestyle money is where it's at. <laughs> you know, like, I'm still going to die. It's where it's at. And so I've been successful. Like, I looked back at my partnerships last year, and I was like, okay. I was like, I don't think I made any of my, I think I maybe had, like, maybe two project sp- sponsorships. And the rest were all lifestyle sponsorships, you know, and it, I mean, it, I mean, it ranged from literally, uh, I mean, I can't even, I mean, mattress, I mean, mattress and um, I mean, just lifestyle in general. And I just was like, yeah, I'm not going to be competing over paint sponsorships. I can go buy the 30, 30, $40 gallon of paint myself, you know, now if they come my way <laughs> yeah. and I have a project that fits totally like a, a flooring brand came to me mm-hmm. and I don't have a flooring project that fits. I do, but it's a very small one. So we, I'm not going to rip up my current floors just to work with this flooring sponsor just to get paid. Like that's going to be more headache. That's going to be more inconvenience for me. So, you know, I just, I just want to encourage people to not only diversify, you know, across uh, like buckets, but within the content that you're doing, because that is how you're going to really generate income being open. Yeah, I love that. And Mm -hmm. I think it's a trend we've been seeing over the past year, because it used to just be like niche down, niche down, be the expert in your area, be the expert in your area. Well, it's like people are sick of watching me paint furniture. They've been watching me paint furniture since 2014. I mean, they still, (laughs) and I still love it, but they know I can paint. And it's like, let's do maybe one furniture flip a month. And then let's go to my dance competition. And you know what? Everybody got sick this weekend, but I, me and my daughter didn't get sick because we were taking our Ollie immunity vitamins that I take everywhere. And when everybody exactly. got sick at Haven, I was taking those and I didn't get sick. Exactly. And it's like, that is real life stuff that we talk about all the time. And so we're like, we are putting that lifestyle stuff into my content. And a lot of people hate it. And guess mm-hmm. what? Oh, they do. Do you know what I say to them? I'm like, bye. Like, if you hate me, why are you here? Why are you here? It's fine. I understand. I am not everybody's cup of tea. I understand that you probably don't like it that I make money off a commission. Well, that's fine. Like, then don't buy it and you can just go away. It's okay. And you don't have to announce your departure as you leave. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. No, seriously. I, 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 I love that you're saying this because it is what we have been talking about on this blog all year is that really people just want to see the things you love. What coffee are you drinking every day? Like, what are your favorite foods, your vitamins, what hair products, like things that you think nobody cares about, but they do. And this is kind of a a change from the niche down, niche down that people want to see the story. They want to know who you are. They want those connection points. And often that comes by saying, oh, this is my favorite coffee maker. And somebody's like, oh my gosh, I love coffee too. Or, you know, just creating some connection points and at the same time, sharing the things you love and building an income stream off of that. Because you're right, you can't be tearing up every part of your house for a new brand partnership. It makes so much more sense Mm -hmm. 
to be getting that stream of income just from things you're consumable things, yep. especially that you use and love yeah. every yep. day. So, and, and just as confirmation to you that you are doing the right thing, the number one like thing that I remember engaging of your content over the past two years is when you went on the Disney cruise and you were showing videos of your mom, like on the Lido <laughs> deck and like her outfit, her and, outfit and then great. just like how you talked about the whole cruise. Cause I love Disney. I've only been on one Disney cruise, but mm -hmm. I love it. And I remember engaging with you about that. And mm -hmm. that's something that's totally out of like what your niche is. Yeah. But I still remember that two yeah. years later. So it's like, that's something you could take to Disney and be like, exactly. you know, instead of, these travel bloggers that go everywhere and they just talk about how much they love it. Like I actually go on Disney cruises once a year and people know that and they know that I'm spending my money on that. So you would actually be a better candidate to like do content for them than actually a travel blogger. I'm so, trying. I'm trying. I just like the way that things I'm are trying. going. I'm yeah. trying. I'm trying. I need Disney to look my <laughs> way. I've, I've told my, cause I have a, a brand manager and I was like, I was like, girl, if you can get me Disney, like I'm first of all, I'm like obsessed with Disney. Like, it's a it's a very like I, on TikTok because my TikTok is curated like I don't follow any DIYers on TikTok. I mean I do, but I don't engage with any DIYers. I want my TikTok to be like totally minus every mindless. I want it to be everything other thing I like about life. And I follow all Same. the yeah. yeah, I follow all the I mean there are all the Disney people that go on live every morning from the park. I'm like in their lives just like watching like I'm like, yeah, because I was just at Disney at Christmas. Like, I'm, a, I'm we did the, we did a, a, our second Disney cruise in February last year, and we were at Disney at Christmas, you know, and um, and so I just, I mean, I was just like, oh, I was there, and I had just said to my husband, I was like, okay, I think I'm Disneyed out for the next couple years, and then when I saw those people on live at Disney the other, like the last couple weeks, I was like, I don't think I'm done with Disney for the next couple years because I really. <laughs> I, I really love Disney. You know, I just like the way it makes yeah. me feel. It's just a nostalgic brand. Mm -hmm. It really makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. And I'm focused, literally, I'm only focusing on things that truly make me happy and that bring me joy. If it doesn't fall within that, then, you know, so when things aren't joyous. Great, I yeah. love it. I love that yeah. too. So. And I think that goes with, along with the next thing I wanted to ask you about, because I, my first time, discovering who you were was at Haven. I actually went to a class that you did with some of your friends and it was all talking about authenticity and social media. So I just wanted you to share with our audience a little bit about what that looks like for you and your platforms. I think we've gotten a little bit of an idea, but as you're shaping how you put your content out, what authenticity looks like, and if you have advice for anyone out there who's trying to figure out what authenticity looks like in their own space and showing up, how to do that and get the longevity that you've had. Um, so, you know, when we look at the definition of, of authenticity It's truly about being in touch with who you are, just being yourself. And, you know, sometimes you got to do a little soul searching, but your friends will be able to tell you who you are, or you know, how you, how you interact with your friends and family is who you, who, who you are as your authentic self. That's literally, that's to me, that's, so I just figured I need to bring more of that to my platform, make sure that's at the forefront of my platform. So, um, and then going a step further, like this year, it's not about Instagram growth to me. It's about Instagram community. It's about how can I, mm -hmm. um, really, uh, latch myself onto my community in a way that resonates with so many people. And it's just truly about sharing random things or like truly things that like the other day I was sharing about health anxiety, right? Like I look all calm and cool and collected. Like I'm probably on top of everything and I am on top of everything. But, but I said that no matter every time I make any appointment, my heart is racing. You know what I'm saying? Like literally anytime I make a doctor's appointment, just an annual appointment, my heart is racing. Like I could figure out a whole scenario in my head about how negative that appointment will be when that is not the case, mm. right? So I shared that and people were like, oh my God, thank you for saying that. I've been scared to make this appointment. I'm going to make this appointment. People are coming back to me sharing, hey, Erin, thank you. I made this, ma make an Instagram post. I made my appointment for my annual mammogram because you made yours. Like I had, you know, I, I was, ho I had held off for five months on making my mammogram appointment just because I was like, okay, I'll get to it. When in reality, I was scared to make it, you know, just because I turned 40 and I'm like, first of all, I can't believe I'm 40. Now I got to make a mammogram appointment, those kind of things. 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so honestly, so I was like, you know what? I'm like, I bet you there's people out there like me. Let me just share this. And I started with sharing it just in words. Like I didn't, I didn't have to come on, you know, talking about it. I just shared it in words. And then I realized that, okay, people, there were so many women that were like, literally, I am terrified to make the appointment. I'm going to make my appointment tomorrow and came back and said, I just made my appointment. Thank you for sharing that. So it's literally just about showing that you're a human being, just like the next person. I get nervous. I get scared. I have anxiety. Um, I I'm happy at times. I'm sad at times. Sometimes I feel great. Sometimes I feel terrible. We all go through those wide range of emotions. And I think it's important to not just say I'm this DIY superhero, but that I'm also a human being. I'm a woman at the end of the day who just entered a whole new realm of midlife and I'm experiencing this and you know, what the heck is this? Oh, I hear squirrels (laughs) in my walls. Here, the squirrels thing is a big thing on my yeah, page. The squirrels, yeah, the squirrels. The squirrels have been, I, I feel so bad for you. Yes. I've been following along this yes. week with all of the squirrel drama. Yes. And those so, jerks so they're, they're tearing such, their house apart. They're tearing it apart, literally tearing it apart. <laughs> and I was like, this lady sent me a thing, like she snapped the picture this morning. And she's like, Aaron, this is one of your squirrels. And it was like a squirrel scaling her house. And I was like, see, like people, and one lady wrote to me. She said, did I miss which company you selected to do the squirrel removal? She's like, I didn't want to miss anything. I'm like, I haven't, like we selected it, but I haven't even called them back yet. Cause I thought that maybe the squirrels moved on. But then I was like, nah, my husband heard him like, like running back and forth through the attic the other night. So I was like, okay, they're still there. So, um, you know, it's just like not a $2,500 thing that I want to pay today. You know what I'm saying? So I've kind of been like procrastinating, but that's a journey that I'm taking people on sharing the prices, sharing how we make our decisions on sharing this big hole that I have on the side of my house. Cause people might think that I'm living perfectly. And I'm like, no, there's a big hole on the side of my chimney right now that my HOA is probably going to drive by and leave me a letter about, you know, those kind of things, like just, just truly sharing. You don't have to share everything. I don't share every single thing, but if there's something that we're, you know, like I'm spiritual as well. So if God put something on my heart that that I feel like I need to share with the masses, I share, I shared, I had my mammogram appointment yesterday. I came out of the appointment and said, Hey guys, I just did it. It wasn't that bad. And guess what? My inbox got flooded with people saying, I'm so scared. Oh my God, knowing that you did this, just, okay, I'm going to make my appointment, you know, just, you know, like, like I need to do this. And so it's just like, anytime I could share and truly be a vessel to share things that are positive or things that are going on in my life that I think will resonate with people, I'm going to do that. And that's, that's what authenticity, authenticity means to me. Wow. I love that. (laughs) And as 40 somethings, we can relate to all of it. Yes, we can relate to all of this. <laughs> yeah. And I can concur that a mammogram really is not as bad no, as you it think isn't. it's going to be. It's so not even make the, the appointment. Yes. And it's not even like I told you, I said, it's not even about the, the mammogram itself. It was like, yeah, that was, that was awkward, but it's just about the anxiety of waiting for the results. But that is me, mm-hmm. like literally the way my head works, right? Is like, I will concoct a whole story in my head about what's going to happen. And I've literally had to literally ask God to help me manage those emotions because I drive myself crazy. You know, I replay and replay and replay, replay, replay. And so those are things that I'm working through, you know, personally. But again, people might think I'm cool, calm and collected on the outside, but inside I'm like, so I'm just trying to like share those different parts of me. So but you all resonate, you know, you're 50 something. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I I just love that because Mm -hmm. I do look at you like a superwoman. like the fact that you blew my mind today. I did not know that you have a full-time job. So just Mm -hmm. like your capacity and your mom and you're a wife, like you're blowing, you're blowing my mind and you do it very beautifully. So it is nice that you're willing to let us in to be like, I don't have it all together because none of us do. So I love that, that you're sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. And something that people might not know about you as well um, is that you have been serving the Haven community for a long time. You're a person who pours back into this industry and doesn't really expect anything back. And Aaron was actually honored with an award a couple of years ago from the Haven community. We talk about that conference all the time on here. So hopefully people know about it, but it's a DIY um, home decor creator conference that Erin has obviously been going to for a very long time. And she was named the heart 
of got the heart of Haven award just because you are so generous with your time. And I know recently I reached out to you and asked you a question about something like a brand or something, and you didn't have to answer me, but you took the time out to answer me and you were honest about it. And those things like matter and they're, I just want people to know just what an encourage you encourager you are behind the scenes and encourager you are in this industry. And another hat that people might know that you don't wear is that you serve on that band, the advisory panel for Haven, and that you have been a huge voice for inclusivity and diversity in this conference space, in this industry. And I have seen you have crucial, crucial conversations with people in the background that need to be had that I think are probably hard. It's hard to navigate that. And I've just seen you do it with such like beauty and grace. So I don't know if there's anything, I just mostly wanted to speak that over you, but I didn't know if there was anything that you wanted to talk about, about why you think doing that stuff behind the scenes is so important. Um, I think it's important. Number one, I was mainly a behind the scenes type person anyway. You know, I was kind of forced as a, as the face of Live Pretty on the Penny. I'm forced in the forefront. But honestly, I enjoy, you know, the whole building things behind the scenes. So um, with Haven, me being, you know, coming to the Haven conference, the second Haven conference, I just knew that there was a there was a lack in the space where I mean, overall, just in a DIY home decor space, there's a lack of diversity. Right. But as I saw, mm -hmm. started to see a growth in it on the let's say the social media side, I didn't see that reflection on the Haven side. So it's kind of like, mm -hmm. what is it about Haven where other people can't can't feel connected? Me, I don't mind a space where I don't see a hundred other versions of me because that because of the kind of personality I have, I don't mind that. But for other people, that can be intimidating. So I just wanted it to become a space where they saw that that other people, other people of color, black people, Hispanic people, whatever, where they saw people that look like them being represented in that space and knew that if they came, mm -hmm. um, you know, Home Depot would look at them or a wood grain would look at them. They're not just looking for a certain type. Yeah. Um, so that was just like my ma my main reason in in doing it, um, and because I knew how I I mean I did I'm, I won't say that it was a sticker shock when I walked in and realized there is nobody here that looks like me, you know. But yeah, I grew up in diverse environments, so it wasn't like I had never seen that before. So um, I grew up in diverse and non -diverse, diverse environments, so it's I've seen that before and, and have been able to navigate it, and nobody was mean to me, you know. So. Um, mm -hmm. it's just one of those things that people in diverse communities had to become aware of. And, you know, I think it's going to take Haven time to get that, you know, even the DIY space is getting more diverse. Like I'm seeing people that I've never seen yeah. black girls that I've never seen, because when I was started, there was Carly made by Carly and Katrina and Shavonda and Carmion. It was like five of us. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. were the ones and they're still around, but those were the ones that I saw. Now I'm like looking at uh, Instagram and TikTok and I'm like, oh, this black girl's doing this. Oh, this girl's doing, like, you know, it's blowing my mind now. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. So it's just, you know, I just think that that Haven, um, you know, it, it will eventually, you know, see a full turn where it'll become more diverse and that people would know that it's a space for everybody. And that's what I'm, you know, that's mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why I joined the diversity committee, because. I wanted to help them do a little bit of the work in the background so that it be, can become, you know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that too. Mm -hmm. I love your heart. Yeah. And yes. I love that, <laughs> that you do it behind the scenes and you're like, we don't even really have to make a big deal about this. I, I just know that it's, it comes from a very pure and authentic place that you just want to see people when like succeed and mm -hmm. you want to see people have the opportunity to succeed and nobody wants sameness like no. we we mm -hmm. think that we do mm -hmm. but it's very boring yeah and the more that we can talk with people that don't look like us mm -hmm. and live in different areas than us the more your eyes are going to be open to that diversity is a very good thing for yeah. all of us to be able to learn and glean from other people exactly it's like yeah would you wear the same clothes every day no it's it's that it's like that it's like you have to 
you're you're open to things in your wardrobe. It's like you have to be open to things in life. You don't eat the same food every day. You don't. I mean, some I don't always drive this. If I go in the office, I don't always drive the same way to work every day. I want to see new scenery. I want to, you know. So it's just like to me, it's the same with people. Like sometimes that gets a little old to just see the same thing over and over again. So, mm-hmm. yeah. no, I mean, I know, like, now that I've like had this long of a conversation with you, all our conversations have been like very short mm-hmm. that we've got to have at the times working on Haven that I get to see you and then our exchanges and DMs. But I understand why I like you so much, even more. I mean, <laughs> but it's just like all this stuff that you have said, like exudes in your spirit, like you. literally within the first five minutes of meeting you, like everything that you have said during this hour lines up with that first five minute interaction that I had with you. Oh, thank um, you. And I just want you to know, I think that that's rare. So you're not just a person who is like, yeah, I'm trying to be authentic. You actually are authentic. And those actions of being authentic are going to teach other people how to navigate this. And I, I love just how rooted you are just in, in, in what you're doing. And it, you're like, I know that what I'm doing has value. And if I make some money on it, great. I am a smart business person. I'm going to make business decisions. But I think you're just very good at what we can also learn from you is just not comparing yourself to other yes, people about, and saying say. like, my success hangs on that. I got this $15,000 deal. Like I, I, that doesn't exude off of you at mm-hmm. all, but mm-hmm. I know that you're a successful person. So I would love to see this industry change in that way that we're not ranking people by followings and ranking people by how much money they're making, but what they are putting out in the world and that they have joy because you know what, that's something that Tabitha Brown is preaching right now. And she is uber successful. Look at what has happened to her in the past couple of years, but her main focus is like, I want to have joy and I want to see other people have freedom and have that joy. And I feel like you have that same kind of calling on you as Tabitha. So I'm also calling into the money on top of that. (laughs) All the blessing that Tabitha's got on top of that in the, in the natural, I'm praying for that for you too, but you're definitely doing all that stuff. Like just it's spiritually like in your spirit, like Mm -hmm. it really comes across just when you meet you in person. So you're I appreciate that. I I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, I was, I just echo what you said, but I just get such the sense that you really know what works for you. You're not constantly looking to the left and to the right to what other people are doing. And I think that is such a factor in the longevity of your business. And so I just wish you all the best and continued growth personally and in your business because I just, I feel like that's a rare thing to, in the content creation world, comparison is the thief of so many things and you see it steal so much from people when they get a platform Um, that I just, I love that about you, that you are building a community of people who can resonate with that and hopefully get that same message, you know, for their own personal lives. I want to say one thing about the comparison piece real quick, just to, if this helps Mm -hmm. anybody, I do get caught up in comparison. Like I'm not, I wouldn't be a human being if I did not, I get caught up in that. And I say, Oh, they're doing, is my time over? I get caught up in that because I told you the way my brain works. It's the, it's it's the anxiety, honestly. And so with that, Mm -hmm. I have to take a step back and say, is this true? What you're thinking, you're running this whole play by play in your head is this true right now? No, it's not. Or if I get caught up in scrolling and saying, oh, they're doing this, they're doing that, shut it down. Move on to what I need to be doing. And that's the best way to combat that. Like, shut it down. Don't keep going down that rabbit hole. Shut it down and focus on the things that you need to be doing in order to get to where you need to go. And I don't care if that's going to write a brain dump of all the things that you need to do, going to shoot some content, but you need to recalibrate that and focus on yourself. And that might call you to stay off of social media for two days, you know, or going to TikTok where your feed is not curated to seeing all the people that are doing all the things that, that you were normally doing. <laughs> right. You know, right. whatever it takes. Yeah. Such good practical mm-hmm. advice for somebody who catches themselves in that comparison trap. Yep. If you're posting something, whoever needs to see it will see it. It may be if I don't care if 25 people only see your, if all it takes is the one right person to see your stuff. And that could be it for you. I've seen it. I've had it happen to me. So don't get caught up in the numbers either. They're all, it's all vanity and we don't control them anyway. So. Mm. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Love it. So Love good. It. So good. <laughs> so good. I mean, I feel like we're probably gonna have to have you back at some point. Cause I feel like. <laughs> 
This has just been so refreshing for my soul. Um, so we're going to do our hard transition. It's always yes. hard to transition out of all this feel good stuff to our favorite things, but I definitely want to know your favorite things because I'm all in. Yes. <laughs> do it. But, um, and I don't even think I have one yet. So do you have one? Yes. And maybe you go first and we'll have Aaron go and then I'll go of our favorite okay. things that we're loving. Well, right my now. favorite thing this week is I know that I'm always talking about my favorite jeans for short girls are made wells usually, but I have found a lower price jean that I absolutely love perfect for short girls. And it's the Levi's low pro jeans. I actually got them on Amazon for under 60 bucks. They are perfect. I cannot do high rise. They're like a perfect mid rise, like 90 style leg. I got, I'll put a picture right here. The wash is Charlie glow up, super comfy, fit me great. Didn't have to cut them or have them altered. Oh, that's the first for you. So yes, <laughs> I found affordable jeans. Awesome. And I'm excited about it. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Nice. So Aaron, tell us what your favorite thing is. Um, okay. So I'm really into glassware right now because I've added this whole cocktail error to my, to my brand. Ooh, I love and, it. Yes. And so, um, I have been finding some nice dupe style glassware on Amazon, um, specifically like coupe style things that you might go to anthropology or whatever. And they're, it's like double the price. Amazon has it. And it's usually packaged in like a set of six or four. And you get a better deal on it. So that's what I'm loving. Like glassware, I'm, that's my new obsession. Well, you guys have good deals for people. The thing that I'm using and loving right now is not a good deal. <laughs> I got a really bougie Christmas present from my husband. He got me the Dyson air wrap and I was like, so excited about it. But I was like, honey, I do not need this. Like this is, we should just take this back. And he was like, well, why don't you just try it before we, I return it? And I tried it and it's pretty nice. <laughs> so, it's pretty nice. Well, I thought it was just for like curling your hair. And I'm like, I, that seems like a lot to have to figure out. And I have curled it once and it really wasn't that hard, but it has like a brush attachment and I have like wavy kinky hair, so I can't let it air dry. So I have to blow dry it when mm -hmm. I blow dry and it just takes forever. And it's so annoying, but it has this brush attachment and my hair is dry in like two minutes. Oh, wow. And my daughter just used it this morning and she like never dries her hair before she goes to school. And it drives me nuts because it just like, I'm like, you look like <laughs> you need to dry your hair before you go to school. We need to like, mm -hmm. you're 11. We need to start mm -hmm. working on this. But she just dried it herself this morning and it looks so smooth and pretty. And there's other like attachments for you know doing a round brush and stuff but it's really bougie you guys so I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy it but it is my favorite thing right now and my husband got it for a hundred dollars off at Christmas so maybe wait till like an Amazon Prime Day or like the holidays because it probably will be that's when they run the deals on them but yeah it's not practical but yes. I love it <laughs> well we will put all the links for Aaron's favorite things mine and Christina's in the box below the description box below We'll also link where you can find Erin on all the different platforms as well as her blog. And we just want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your day to sit here with us. I think so many people are going to be blessed by your story, mm -hmm. by your encouragement, by your authenticity. Um, and hopefully this won't be the last time we have you on the podcast, but thanks so much, Erin. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. That was so much fun. I love that. And if you yes. want to, you, if you want to meet Erin in person, I'm pretty sure she's going to be at Haven this year along with me. So <laughs> we could all have a little party together and meet up. Um, yeah. But we are so appreciative that you guys made it all the way to the end of this episode. We'll be back soon with another one. And thanks for joining us today in the Cypress Room.